finally. So it's very awkward five minutes when you need to stand with your microphone and can't say anything. <laughs> okay, uh, so my name is Marius. I'm a software engineer at Wix, and today I'm going to tell you a story about how we did uh, redirect to HTTPS and how hard can it be, right? So, for those of you who don't know us, uh, Wix.com is a powerful drag and drop website builder and it allows to extend its core functionalities with various services and tools. And the uh, public area of FixUp Market uh, is uh, the place that I maintained and the place where this story happens. So one day I got an email from our SEO team and they noticed that we are serving the same content regardless of which protocol you use. And since HTTP and HTTPS are different protocols, um, bots would treat uh, that as two different sites. And they also mentioned that we might risk to get a penalty for duplicate content, so uh, I had to fix it. Generally, you do this by sending a server-side uh, redirect with status code 301 from HTTP to HTTPS version of your site. You also ensure that uh, all internal links point to HTTPS to avoid unnecessary redirects. Uh, there might also be a good idea to implement HSTS policy, which uh, protects you from uh, protocol downgrade attacks. Uh, but it only works uh, when your whole site is uh, migrated to HTTPS, which was not the case in, in my case. So, a couple things come to my mind. At first I thought, why not do that at uh, our load balancer dispatcher level, uh, so the request doesn't even reach my servers, and uh, that was not possible. Uh, at that point of time, not everything under Wix.com domain was HTTPS ready, and we don't do custom rules for our microservices. Another thing that came to my mind was uh, a, require, a require SSL annotation that I saw in our library. And most of you are Java developers, so you know what annotation is, and there is basically nothing easier than just to add an annotation to an endpoint. Uh, but I noticed that it uses a wrong status code, uh, a 302, which is uh, a temporary direct. So, like generally, you, if you add such a notation to your endpoint, you probably expect it to be always served in HTTPS, so I thought, why not change it to uh, permanent? So, I go ask around, I write in our public chat, and it turns out that there is a reason for that. Uh, one thing about 301, and the name actually states it, that it's a uh, permanent redirect. So everything in between, uh, like browsers, proxies, and etc., will cache it. And so that's a lot of caches that you don't actually control. So if you make a mistake, uh, it's very difficult to reverse your decision. So eventually I decided to just write plain uh, code. Uh, I added it under a feature toggle so I can safely test it by myself. I released it, uh, I test it on production, everything worked fine, so I opened the feature toggle. And I actually even monitored for a while while doing other stuff, uh, but eventually I went home. And it went wrong. <laughs> I come in in the morning and I see that all our graphs are red. We actually have monitors uh, in our office that shows uh, the status of your applications. I see a lot of alerts in my email, and uh, it took me actually it took me uh, a while to understand what happened. I obviously I turned off the feature toggle immediately. Everything back went back to normal, and then I went into the request logs to che to check. Uh, what was the reason? And to tell you the reason, I first need to explain the rendering sequence for bots that we had at the time. Uh, since our front end was uh, mostly generated by JavaScript uh, running on a client side, and many of the bots are not really good at uh, 
we are not really good at running the JavaScript, we used an external service called pre-render.io uh, to do the JavaScript rendering for us. <coughs> it basically consists of two parts. One is the middleware that you run in your codes, and the other part is uh, your servers which do the actual rendering. So how it typically works is uh, when a search uh, bot uh, hits uh, your endpoint, uh, this middleware would intercept it, send uh, the request to their service. Uh, the service would call us back with the uh, original URL to get uh, a dynamic page. Uh, they would run all the JavaScript, and then uh, they would send us a prepared static HTML uh, so we can proxy it back to, to bot. So what I expected to happen was that I added a redirect so free to free o, a 301 redirect to HTTPS. So when a bot hits us, I expected it to immediately get a redirect, then call us back uh, on HTTPS URL and the usual rendering sequence to occur. Uh, remember me mentioning a feature toggle? So it turns out that uh, our feature toggles have a flag to tell whether to include bots or not. And that flag is default by, it's false by default. So another unlucky coincidence that happened is that uh, that library didn't consider pre-render as bot. So what actually happened is uh, when a bot uh, hit an endpoint and the feature toggle would not let it through the new functionality, it would uh, let it through the old one and it would call, would pass through to pre-render, pre-render call us back and we would redirect pre-render to HTTPS. Uh, Obviously, that's uh, an error. Pre-render doesn't know what to do with redirect. It expects to get a 200 uh, so it can render the page. So it would send us uh, an internal server error, which we would proxy directly back to bots. It didn't take very long for me to fix it. It's just uh, one flag. Uh, but I think there are a couple things that we can learn from this story. And I think the first question that you might ask is why uh, I didn't notice it immediately. And this is because uh, some errors might take a while to manifest. In uh, our case, uh, Perender actually has a cache. So until that cache expired, uh, the, it would just serve, to serve the page normally. And coincidentally, that cache expired uh, at night when I was at home sleeping. <laughs> Uh, you might also ask why I didn't notice the alerts, and uh, it is because if you get too many of them, you just stop reading them. And uh, in our case, we made a mistake previously, and uh, bots has cached a lot of non-existing pages. And every time uh, someone comes to a non-existing page, uh, we send a 404, and that's an uh, error condition. So. If enough bots would hit non-existing pages, it would cause an alert. Uh, most of the bots actually cleaned up pretty quickly, like in a couple months. Uh, but there was one bot that was notoriously bad at this, and uh, it haunted us for almost a year. And uh, he was also hitting us uh, at the point of the story, so we usually got alerts at least a couple times a day when it decided to refresh its index. Another thing that comes to my mind is that uh, not all users are equal. Uh, if you have a public web page, it doesn't only get hit by a desktop browser, it might also get hit by uh, website search engine crawlers, uh, scrappers or even your acceptance testing software. And I was developing a feature that was mostly geared to search bots and even then I forgot to check whether there is a feature, <laughs> there is a flag to include bots in, in a feature toggle. And 
Actually, that flag makes sense. Like, if you are, we are also using the same uh, library for our A/B testing, and usually you do not want bots to cache uh, pages if you do not know that they are the winning combination. Uh, another thing that you might have noticed is that my original code was correct, and it was ironically it was trying to be safe that caused the failure. And uh, I'm not saying that I would not add a feature like this under a feature toggle, uh, but uh, generally, the more complex your solution is, the more space for bugs uh, appear. And uh, <laughs> And lastly, uh, 301 is scary. Like I, before implementing the feature, I did a lot of reading, and there are a lot of ways you can shoot yourself in the foot with it. Uh, for, uh, firstly, it's cached uh, basically eternally uh, by everything, by browsers, proxies, uh, by design. And uh, it requires actually clearing user browser cache uh, to fix it. So be, believe me, if uh, you made a mistake and asked your support agents to explain uh, browser cache clearing sequence to every affected users, uh, they would kill you. And I was actually bitten by this myself. I had a weird router uh, which uh, would redirect me with 301 to some URL whenever I entered its IP. And it was really annoying when I brought uh, a new router, which would give me a 404 uh, whenever I entered the same IP. So I had to use incognito mode at first to configure it. So if you do need to move a page uh, or do a, an HTTP to HTTPS migration, uh, there are a couple of things that can help you. Uh, firstly, uh, you can set cache control and, or expires headers so the response is not cached permanently. Or you can use a 302 for testing and uh, replace it with a 301 later. Thank you. <laughs> I think I still have time for questions, if there are any. <laughs> OK, great. I can go, go and grab my sandwich. <laughs>